everyone, NeuroRebel here, and this week we're going to talk about visual thinking. The good, the bad, the ugly, how this impacts communication. If this is interesting to you, stick around. We're going to dive into it next. myself am a visual thinker and although not all autistic people are visual thinkers this does seem to be something that is fairly common with a lot of autistic people that I have met personally are you a visual thinker are you autistic and a visual thinker are you not autistic and a visual thinker what is being a visual thinker like for you I want to know let's share because this is not a universal experience but it is cool to see how we are same and how we differ you might say, well, I don't know. How would I know if I'm a visual thinker? Well, let me explain to you what this is like for me. So someone will say something and I instantly have not words in my head, but a visual representation of what is being described to me. For example, when someone says it's raining cats and dogs, even though I know what this phrase actually means, my visual brain imagines the very literal cats and dogs falling from the sky. It is what I see. Also, for example, if somebody describes an event to me, especially if it is something gross or graphic, I am instantly going to see this in my head. Often in great detail. Which means this can also be a very horrible thing when people are telling you about things that are really horrific that I don't want to be picturing or have pictures of in my head. But I am thinking in video and picture, so everything in my mind is very visual. When people ask me questions, I have to kind of go back through and visually sort through data and pictures and maybe logos in my head if I'm trying to remember something from the store. I'm like trying to look at different boxes of products like, oh, cereal, cereal, I see this cereal, I see this cereal, I see this cereal. And it's a very visual memory. The other part of this that is complicated is because I think visually, I don't necessarily think to myself so I think that's why I talk to myself a lot out loud, actually. Certain concepts that aren't easily made visual, such as feelings and emotions, are often harder for me to explain or express or put into words. That's why I like to do a lot of writing to get things out of my head, onto a paper, into a visual space, and talking through things myself also help with this to process all of this visual stuff and put it into words because I don't think in words. I think in videos and pictures and it's a very different experience in my head. I cannot imagine being someone who just thinks through everything in words. It probably makes people easier conversationalists because in conversation sometimes there is a bit of a delay where I have this concept and it's a visual concept and I can see it. But then I have to figure out how to make it into words. And then if I have time to make it into words, the conversation may have moved on already because there's that bit of a lag from translating into my native visual thinking style language to speaking and getting that out of my mouth into something that is articulable for other humans. I may like look off to the side of the screen for a minute or appear to look down and away while I gather my thoughts. And that's because I am going through those very visual things, going this, 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 like I'm sorting through that visual Rolodex 
So I have those little pauses where I freeze and appear to go somewhere else because I am seeing something in front of me that you cannot see and I am visualizing. It looks like I'm daydreaming. I'm sure I was told I was daydreaming when I was actually visualizing things many times growing up. Do you think visually is a skill for me and is a skill for many autistic people? I can go through and rerun a scenario in my head, close my eyes and go back to a 360 VR version of a memory and walk myself through the place I was. My memories are very clear. And just as much as this can be a skill, this, as I mentioned earlier with visualizing things you don't want to visualize, can also be unfortunate. Because all of my memories are so very clear, even the bad memories, if I allow myself to ruminate and fixate and experience bad memories, it can be like reliving them all over again because they are so clear. And that kind of sucks. But I love the fact that my good memories are equally clear and accessible. The funny thing about my memory though is that working memory, that executive functioning, that short-term memory doesn't always stick. And my long-term memory is really long term. I have crystal clear memories of being one to one and a half, two years old, teaching myself to speak and escaping from my crib. And a lot of people do not have memories of being that young. But if you ask me if I locked the door when we left the house, I couldn't tell you. Or did I feed the dogs today? When's the last time I shampooed my hair? I'm going to have to get back to you and figure that out. I'm really completely dependent on my visual schedule because all these little things don't stick in my head. I'm not sure if that's because I don't really have any timelines in my head or what. There are a bunch of just events and things floating around in there. And unless I put it on a timeline... There is no timeline. And that's kind of hard. And that's another reason I think I'm so dependent on my visual schedule. Because it's a little bit chaotic in there with all those visual things floating around. If you ask me, would you give this up? Would you give up the way you think? Would you change the way your mind works? No, absolutely not. Over the past few years since being diagnosed and discovering that I am autistic, I have been on a mission to learn to work with my mind instead of against it. It is getting easier, mostly now because I know I'm autistic and that my mind does work in a different way. Because for a lot of years, I didn't really understand how much of an impact this had on my life. And the impact is very big. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for hanging out with me this week. I would Love to know your thoughts in the comments below if you haven't already dropped me a comment. Are you autistic? Are you a visual thinker? Are you not a visual thinker? What is it like inside your brain? Because we are all different. This has just been my singular experience as an autistic person with a visual thinking style. Like I said over and over again, every episode, each and every autistic person and autistic experience is unique. So I'd love to know what this is like for you. Drop us a note. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for hanging out with me with this week. I put out new videos every Wednesday, so don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications if you found this video helpful. Actually, if you found it helpful, it would be really amazing if you could share this video. Sharing is caring and it is how I get the word out with this educational content. So that's really wonderful. If you could do that for me, just give it a quick share, please, please, please. I am resulting to begging. Also a huge thank you to the NeuroRebel Patreon subscribers and Facebook supporters 
for helping me create quality content with transcriptions and closed captioning. I couldn't do it without you. Thank you so much to each and every one of you for being a huge part of what I do. Thank you all for being here. I will talk to you next week. Bye!